Anything Can Happen, Audio Annual 2022, read by Nicholas Briggs and Wayne Forrester. Stingray, 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 Stingray. Aquacade Emergency. With a shuddering crash, the terrorfish hit the bottom. In the second before he lost consciousness, Troy saw the whole tail section of the aquafibian craft come away from the main body. And then the blinding flash of an explosion tore his hands from the rudder and rolled him backwards and over into numbing oblivion. Marineville must go. Launch Stingray, he yelled at Troy. Get out there and take up action stations facing this headquarters. I'm going to tell those characters that I'll blow them off the face of the earth if they try to take so much as one brick out of my command center. But Commander, pleaded Troy, you can't be serious. Five. Four. Three. Thunderbirds are gone. Thunderbirds. Aquaphobia. Engine screaming, he fought his way up and out of the trench. The ocean bed cracked and heaved, as if some primeval force was tearing and clawing away to freedom. Then he saw the sun. And he was on the surface, bucketing wildly in ten-foot waves beside the battered bathosphere. A pale, weak face appeared at the window, and Gordon gasped. Someone else, he snapped, trapped in the sphere. Four hours to eternity. I reckon that's the entrance. So for Pete's sake, tell Gordon to get his navigation right first time. The hands of the clock moved on, and the four hours were up. Inside the vault, the raiders would be gasping for their last ounce of oxygen. Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons, Mirror of Vengeance. The whole of the cockpit rocketed vertically as the computer fired the ejector. Up, up, up she soared. Below her, Angel One exploded in a vast orange flame. The attack had been a complete failure. Mirror One continued on its path of devastation. The Midas Menace. Suddenly, the two SPVs which had just returned to position raced forward in a suicidal attack on the giant rumbling monsters bearing down on the gold vaults. With a metal searing crash, the lead SPVs rammed the front tank square in its tracks. The huge links of the caterpillar wheels bit deep into the SPV's front, pulling the vehicle down and under in a crushing, tearing action. Joe 90, the Cracksman. With Joe in the lead, the prisoners moved towards the main gate. It was just then that the guards arrived. Like black avenging angels, they dropped from the darkness of the prison walls upon the unsuspecting prisoners below. Long wooden truncheons flashed in the moonlight and heads cracked as the weapons met their mark. One of the first to go under the torrent of blows was Joe himself. Thank you.